Hi, I'm Raj. A few months back, I built a side project called gitposted.dev. And in that app, I built an infinite scroll component using an external library. At a first glance, this might look like a normal infinite list where you load more components as you scroll, but in fact, it's not. It's a special kind of list called virtualized list. In a virtualized list, even if you have thousands of items on the list, you only render the items that are supposed to be visible to the user. Apps like Twitter have this already implemented. For example, as you scroll through the infinite Twitter feeds to load more items, you can see that even though we load more posts, the number of DOM elements hasn't changed. This means that we're constantly removing the items that the user scrolled away from and adding the items that the user has scrolled into. And this is a virtualized list in action. I plan this content to be more of a deep dive as this is a fairly complex topic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this content down into subsections. First, we're going to talk about what's the problem with rendering really long lists and how do virtualized lists solve the problem. Next, we're going to talk about what's the architecture behind a virtualized list. And then we're going to build our own virtualized list with a fixed list item height. And then we're going to optimize the virtualized list that we've just built for better performance. Last but not the least, we're going to talk about if you should build your own virtualized list or should you use external libraries. We have a simple React app to render three different components in our routes. The first component is our non-virtualized list. And if we go to a component, you can see that it accepts a number for the number of list items that need to be rendered. We use this number and generate an array of list items and we pass the items to our unordered list tag. This unordered list tag also has a fixed height. That is the height of the window and an overflow Y scroll class. And the list item also has a fixed height. Now we're going to see how this works. You can see that this works fine for 1000 items. You can see that on the DOM, we have 1000 items rendered. I'm going to go back and increase the number of items to 1 million. And after changing it to 1 million, if I check back my app, you can see that the UX is completely broken and the app is nearly unusable. The reason is that the DOM is spammed with thousands of list items and it's practically impossible to efficiently repaint these many items. This box is our UL tag and it's our scroll container. Inside our scroll container lives our scrollable content. The problem is that when this component loads, the scrollable content is already fully rendered. In a virtualized list, we don't render all these items at once. Instead, we render only the items the user sees inside the window. As a user scrolls, we efficiently render new items inside this window. Let's talk about the architecture behind building virtualized list. In a normal list, since the scrollable content is already rendered, we know the start and the end of the scroller. And for the scroller to be active, the content should be rendered. And if you add an event listener, on the scroll, you will have access to a specific field called scroll top on the current target. This tells you how far down you've scrolled from the top. And this is really important information for us. In a virtualized list version, we don't render the scrollable content fully, rather only on demand. So that leaves us with two challenges to solve. The first challenge is that we only have to render the scrollable content that the user sees inside the window. The next is that we have to keep the scroll behavior alive with scrollable content rendered only inside the window. And how do we figure out the content that the user sees inside the window? For that, we're going to use the scroll top information. And with the scroll top information, we can calculate the start index and the end index of the list items we have to render inside the window. The second and the most important challenge, how do we keep the scroll behavior alive when we render only a few items and not all the items? In order to keep the scroll behavior alive, we're going to use a technique that would expand the size of the scrollable content without us needing to render more items. That means we will have empty space instead of the actual content. Let's take this example where we have only one item in the list. The scroller is not active and you can't see the scroll bar. If I add a position relative to the parent and position absolute to the list item and add a top 
of 500 pixels, you can see that even though the scrollable content is only one list item, the scroller is active. If you take a look at this diagram, you can see that we add a top value for all the absolutely positioned list items. And this takes care of adding the empty space at the top and also arrange the list items in their right place. All right, based on the architecture we talked about, we're gonna build a virtualized list from scratch. Here you can see that I've copied my code for the non-virtualized list into a new file. First, I'm gonna add an event listener to keep track of the scroll top in a state and use the scroll top to find my start index and end index of the items that I need to render. The start index is going to be the scroll top divided by item height and the end index is going to be the window height plus the scroll top divided by the item height. We are going to use the start index and end index to generate our list items and pass them as children to our parent. And based on the technique we talked about in the last section, we will also add a position relative to the parent and add position absolute to our list items. And on top of that, the top style is just the index multiplied by item height. And this will enable us to create an empty space we talked about and also place the list items in their right place. And I'm gonna add a simple background color based on the index. Now let's go ahead and see if this works. All right, so it looks like it's not working as expected and there is a reason for that. It's not working because we've not triggered the scroll yet because the items are packed into the window and there is no need for a scroll. We're gonna introduce additional items to render above and below the window so that we will have a smooth scroll experience. And we're gonna call it overscan. And this is added both above and below the window. So it will change our start index. So we would have to subtract the overscan from our existing start index, which would be a negative value for a start index. And that's not valid. So we will pick the max between zero and the possible negative value using mat.max. And we will add overscan to the end index and we will use the mat.min so that it doesn't really exceed the total number of list items. And now if you go and try again, you can see that our infinite scroll is working as expected. Since we add empty space at the top, you can see that the scroll bar is expanding and it's also decreasing in size when we scroll back up. So this is an easy fix. Let's add another container on top and give it the total height of all the rendered items so that our scroll bar is aware that it's going to be a long content. Great, now that we have done all the changes, let's go and check out our list. It looks great and works great as expected. You can see that the items of the DOM that are rendered and updated as we scroll based on the scroll top. We all know that using position absolute is not great for the performance. And also we are setting the top value of every list item we try to render, which may not be optimal. Instead of trying to apply the top style for all the items, imagine we stack all the items inside one container and move that container based on the scroll offset. And in this case, we only care about the start index and we apply a translate Y style to the whole container based on the start index. And translate Y would push the item down from its original Y position and is also GPU accelerated. We no longer need end index. Instead, we're gonna need the total number of items that we will be rendering. It's going to be window height divided by the item height plus two times the overscan. But as we scroll to the end, this value would also change and we might accidentally add overscan items when they don't exist. So in order to avoid it, we will calculate the number of items minus start index and pick the min of these two values. to generate rows function. Instead of start index and end index, it will have only rendered nodes count. And we will use a start index in order to identify which index 
is our current rendered index. And we no longer need the absolute and relative positions. So we will remove them. And finally, we will add our container that will have the translate Y style and render our list items inside this container. Let's go take a look at the app and see how it works. And instead of having the absolute position and top style on all the items, we only have translate Y on this container. And if I scroll down, only the translate Y gets updated. And I believe that the performance can be optimized even further by memoizing some parts of the app. The virtualized list that we've built so far is only for the fixed list item heights. However, if you want to build one for dynamic heights, the algorithm could get more complicated and we won't be talking about the dynamic heights in this video. If you want me to make another content about it, let me know in the comments. And if you're keen on building a virtualized list with dynamic heights algorithm, I recommend reading this article by Adam Klein. He goes into detail about building virtualized lists for both fixed and dynamic heights. Now, coming back to the question, should you build your own virtualized list or should you use an external library? I would say use an external library because building a performant virtualized list is really hard and also time consuming. When it comes to external libraries for virtualized list, there are quite a few options available. However, I will only talk about the top three libraries that I've used while building my app. The first two libraries, React Virtualize and React Window, are from the same author. I would not recommend using React Virtualized as it's practically abandoned at this point with a lot of GitHub issues. The second library called React Window seems to be slightly better, but it's not actively maintained. There are still over 200 GitHub issues. I would say that's not a good sign. The only virtualization library that I would recommend for your React apps is React Virtuoso. This is a library that I use for my app. The author is actively maintaining the library and there are less than 30 GitHub issues and that's a great sign. It comes with so many features like auto resizing and load on demand right out of the box. The APIs are really easy to implement and the documentation is excellent. They have a section for troubleshooting the performance problems as well. And overall, it's a fantastic library uh, and the one that I would recommend for building virtualized lists. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more and I will talk to you soon.